<laughs> no, I'm right halfway, you know. <laughs>
she's gone. See, she's been called up. And he immediately pulls out his checkbook and says, how much does it cost to get there? Mm. He said, man, your checkbook can't get you there. Mm -hmm. He said, oh, I know I can buy my way into anything. Mm -hmm. So he pulls out a wall of money. He said, look, I got about a thousand dollars. When we get there, I can give you more. And the preacher slaps the money out of his hand and says, your money is useless. Mm. And he looks to the pastor and says, well, it wasn't useless when I gave you thousands for your appreciation program. Okay. And he was like, you're right. But it's not going to get us in. I saw watching the video. Come on, come on. A church full of people now had only half of them in there. Mm. That in itself is a message that's coming into the building. It's not going to get us into heaven. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. We can show up here every Sunday. We can be present at every function. We can be at Bible study. But that does not guarantee that we are going to make it into heaven. So I asked the question this morning, which way are you going to take? Which pathway are you going to walk down? In this particular passage, it's, it's the latter part of the Sermon on the Mount. Sermon on the Mount started in verse 5. It's a long passage, but Jesus is wrapping up his teaching. He's wrapping it up, and so he's now describing a series of choices for the listeners to make. Because how many of you know God is not going to force us to do anything? Amen. Amen. He's going to put it out there, and it's up to us to decide what we're going to do and what we're not going to do. So stop saying the devil made me do it. The devil didn't make you do it. You did it because you wanted to do it. You did it because it was on the inside of you. You cannot blame the devil for the decisions we make. Can't do that. He got an influence, but at the end of the day, the decision is up to us. And so in this series of choices, the first, which kingdom are you going to be a part of? Because you know we're kingdom-minded people. We were kingdom. It's not about church, religion. We're spiritual people. Either we're going to be in the kingdom of God and serve him, or we're going to operate in the kingdom of Satan and serve him. But at the end of the day, whose choice is it? It's ours, it's mine, it's yours. We can't force anybody to do anything. Amen? Amen? So, when you read this passage, there are several things, several messages that are just being layered into this particular passage. The narrow gate represents Jesus' way. Say that narrow gate. Narrow gate. Represents Jesus' way. Represents Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it already tells us those who follow him are going to have a difficult route. If we choose to take the narrow gate, please understand that we are choosing a difficult road. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. It's different from how the world operates. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, it leads to life. Why are we here? Why are we do what we do? Why did we choose Christ? It's because we want life, not just life down here, but eternal life as well. And it says that it's going to be difficult. Yeah. And I need us to understand that because sometimes we join the body of Christ and we think that everything is just going to be smooth and easy. It's not like that at times. Yes, we do have those moments that things are just flowing, and that's because we're flowing in the strength of God. We got the Holy Spirit backing us up, but then there are going to be some days that we're going to have some spiritual warfare. But at the end of the day, 
Trust me, it's going to be worth it. The choice that most people would like to make is the wide game. They want that wide game. Why? Because it's easy. Mm -hmm. I mean, just in nature, I mean, just naturally thinking about it, who really wants to take a difficult route? Mm -hmm. This is like when we travel and we put in our GPA system, they give us so many routes to go. Yeah. Most of us take the fastest route. Most of us want the route that doesn't have any uh, two-way lanes, but they're all four-way, highway, straight shot. Nobody really puts in their GPA system. I want to take the longest, roughest route. Come on, I want them to. Right. I want that easy, quick way. Yes, indeed. And that's what this pathway, this wide pathway, looks like. When people look at it, just like on the picture, of course we want the easy way. It seems easy to get where we're trying to go. Not only that, but taking this long pathway suggests that it's going to satisfy our flesh. Because it's wide, we have more choices. We got a variety of things versus something that's narrow. We don't have much wiggle room. Mm -hmm. And so why not? Why would someone not want to take the easy route? You see, the wide gate represents something that's going to please our flesh. But how many of you know that pleasing the flesh is going to make us an enemy of God? Mm -hmm. The two cannot operate together. They will never operate together. Either you go worship God and hate the flesh or worship the flesh and hate God. It ain't no way around it. Mm -hmm. There's no in-betweens. And see, during this time, Jesus had a message to those who were listening. He was referring to those who were going to continue to follow the Israelites. I mean, the Israel religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees. 